What was the best you have no power here moment you have ever seen? I used to work for a super CNTY manager when I worked at McDonald's. This guy was horrible to us. He was constantly bullying us. Shti talking us to customers. And doing everything in his power to make us miserable. Well. So many people complained about him that he ended up getting fired. New manager was great. He was super chill and understanding with us all. A couple weeks after he took over. The old doucher bag comes in and starts talking about how terrible the store looks. How our service is shtier than ever. And how much this store needs him. The new manager looked at him and said if you don't leave. Then the cops are gonna make you. When the doucher bag didn't move. New awesome manager stuck to his guns and called the cops. The doucher bag is no longer allowed on any McDonald's property in the city and has a restraining order against him. The first time I had dinner at my parents house after I got my own apartment. My dad was giving me grief as usual. Finally. I stood up and said. I don't live here anymore. I don't have to put up with you this way any longer. I'm going home. And walked out. Most liberating moment of my life. I told my ex I was getting remarried. He told me he was going to stop me and put a line on my house. Which I bought with my money 6 years after the divorce. My son would come home from visitations telling me how his dad was going to stop the wedding and I'd have to pay him all of this money. La dee da. Get to court. His attorney goes blah 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 for what felt like forever. My lawyer. Yes. I had to freaking get one. Stands up and simply hands the judge the divorce papers showing the disbursement of funds and how my ex isn't owed anything. Judge looks at X's lawyer and basically asks. Did you even ask for this document before filing? And dismisses the case. X and I were moving out after a breakup. Cleaning out garage. She was being critical of my post breakup plan of moving in with a co-worker until I could find a better place to live. As most options weren't great. I took a deep breath and laughed. This puzzled her. Why are you laughing? She asked. I collected myself and said because this is the last time I have to listen to this. You don't get to be critical of anything I ever do. Ever again. It was a really great feeling. Because I literally thought of the you have no power here as I laughed. I'm a high school teacher who teaches a lot of senior grades and so has to deal with graduation grades. References for university. All that jazz. I had a parent of a graduating kid in my classroom in June, after final marks were given to students but not formally reported, who was a dental surgeon in town. Ran a large operation. Donated a lot to local sports. Big man in a small town. I had given his kid a mark in the high B range. And so he marched into my office and started off with the there must be some mistake line. Which moved swiftly into the you're going to change it because I tell you too to how much will it cost to get him the A. When I refuse the bribe he went to you're fired. 1. 1. Full stop. Not I'm going to get you fired but you're fired. Clean out your desk. I just asked him to leave. Ended badly. He threatened violence. I reported him to the school admin. He's now banned from the property. MR. I pay your salary so you work for me you lousy piece of s it was threatened with the cops by Mr. Random Act PG. Not me. But a story my dad used to tell me all the time. So my biological grandmother was very emotionally abusive. She was very controlling and tried to keep people within her sphere of influence. There's a reason why my grandfather divorced her. In high school my dad had a job washing airplanes at an airport in our area. Which he absolutely loved, he is a huge fan of aircraft in general. He had classes until roughly 10am and then he'd be off to work until around 10pm, it was what he loved. He didn't mind long hours being around aircraft all day. But one day he came home a little too late for his mom's liking. She said she'd take his keys to his motorcycle and that he lost privileges to it. The fact of the matter is that he bought the motorcycle himself and he needed it to get to school as well as work. He laughed in her face and she didn't do anything. She couldn't do anything. I was waiting for a friend to finish work, 
She worked at a restaurant so fancy they had someone vetting guests at a podium outside. The place was glitzy and the folks were glam so the great and good would descend in droves. Those with a reservation were sent in. Prospective walk-ins had to queue. A car sweeps up. The driver jumps out and holds the door open to unleash a hat and dress. The woman accompanying said finery, a C-list actress from a regional daytime TV show, looked through everyone present and moved to enter. She froze. Appalled. When the guest vetter intercepted. Asking do you have a reservation? She mustn't have heard the question because she didn't respond. Instead she drew herself up to the full height of her couture and demanded do you know who I am? Yes said the maitre d. Back of the queue. Woman complained we wouldn't fill her clearly fraudulent C2 prescription. Brought the brand new store manager back to the pharmacy to make us fill it. She says you have to fill it. God himself cannot make us fill anything if it fails the checks. No. Some secretary of some branch of a state agency would go on a power trip and stamp. Do not copy on things that she sent to local agencies. Well. I work for an oversight agency and I needed a copy. Locals were terrified so I rolled my eyes and called to explain that the locals and I were basically the same entity. Woman started to have a conniption fit. But she got real quiet when I cut her off and said. Fine. I'll issue a subpoena. What's your name and job title? She answered. And the sheriff served her a subpoena for what I wanted. Guess she wasn't used to that. IT services for a client of mine. They paid for me to come to their office and address a problem. 8 hours minimum time. The issue was resolved in about 45 minutes. They'd set up something incorrectly and it was pretty obvious once I got into the system. I was packing up to leave and the client stopped me. What are you doing? The system is fixed so I'm headed out back to my office. No. I paid for 8 hours. You'll do your 8 hours. If I tell you to wash my car for 8 hours that's what you'll be doing. Right. So anyway. I'm leaving. I'll notify the office to send you the invoice and in all likelihood we'll no longer be working with you and withdrawing your lease on our equipment. I worked in management at a theater for a while. If the concession counter was slammed and I was able. I'd leave my post and help them sling popcorn. One night while helping out. A particularly belligerent man started cussing out a 16 year old girl on a cash register for being too slow. Even suggesting she quit since she clearly couldn't handle pushing buttons or scooping popcorn. It was pretty disgusting and I felt so bad for the girl. I stepped in and told the guy that our employees have the right to refuse service to customers who harass them as part of our anti-harassment discrimination policy. Empathized that the lines were longer than usual. And suggested he should apologize and move on. He was pissed. Left half his order on the counter and started fuming off. Anticipating his next move. I went back to my original post that night. As manager of the customer service kiosk. Oh boy. The look on his face when he saw me. Didn't want a refund of his tickets though so I assume he watched the movie. Without popcorn. I grew up with my parents having screaming arguments over every little thing. They do love each other, over 50 years of marriage so far testifies to that, and it always upset me. A couple of days ago. They popped into my house to visit for a coffee on their way to stay with friends a few miles away. Within minutes. They were yelling at each other. I took great pleasure in telling them that I would not stand for such behavior in my house and. If they didn't lower their voices. They could stand outside until they learned some manners. The meek apologies tasted so sweet. As did the coffee. That would be a customer we had named Nick. I'll leave his last name out to protect the stupid. He would email us and always cc editor at, some nation all know or spapa. Com and most of his emails were things like nothing fck ing works. None of the national newspapers responded. I imagine some underling just rolled his eyes and deleted them. Finally he said. Fix this in 5 minutes or I cancel. My manager says let me see that email. He responded thank you. I cancelled your account. We don't want customers like you anyway. If you want to contact the media. That's your call. 
I'll happily provide the months of threatening emails you sent to my staff. He gave us months of headaches over a UAcube 45 slash quarter account. We definitely didn't need him. My boss calling me at 7am on a Saturday to ask if I could lay some flooring for a friend of his at nearly half my normal rate. Yeah. Hard pass Andy. I wasn't good at returning library books when I was a kid. I got lectured by my school librarian about it a lot. Fast forward 20 years and I'm a supervisor at the local public library and my former now retired school librarian goes there. One day I see her sneaking around the front desk instead of coming back to say hi to me and I immediately figure something's up. I go up to say hi and she acts exasperated and tells me she was trying to avoid me because she had overdue books. So I put on my reading glasses. Pulled them down over my nose. And delivered the same lecture she'd given me countless times about being responsible and turning in books on time. I was bartending one night and these three guys were absolutely hammered so I cut them off. One of the guys proceeded to try to argue with me saying he has all this money and he tells me when he's done drinking and he's not even drunk. This point. I'm done trying to be polite and point blank tell him I'm done arguing with him. Will not be serving him and his buddies. And he can leave. He looks at me and says now excuse me. Who are you to tell me how much I can and cannot drink? Comma. I look him dead in the eye and say the F king bartender. Now it's time for you to go. The look on his face was priceless. Never forget the golden rule. Don't piss off your bartender. I joined the army reserve in 1983. In between my junior and senior year in high school. Going to drill one weekend and we were doing war games with another reserve unit. They mailed everyone a letter with the challenge and response to be let into the unit. As a lowly private. I was standing guard at the entrance and had to say the challenge. Everything's going good until a city police car pulls up and the cop is a new lieutenant. I give the challenge and he just look at me. I say it again and he said to just let him in because he didn't know it. He starts getting belligerent and I ask him to turn off the car and step out. He gets out and starts yelling at me. The sergeant major heard the commotion and comes over and tears the young lieutenant in you asshole. It was very satisfying to watch and I learned that day that even though a second lieutenant outranks a sergeant major. It really doesn't matter because the sergeant major had been in for 20 years and didn't put up with any bullshit. When an unhappy client threatens to go hire a better lawyer. They don't seem to get that this isn't a threat when they aren't paying me. I worked at a grocery store for 5 years putting up with crazy customers and their awful attitudes. At the end of my tenure our store was set to be closed. And for the last month the store was sold to a liquidation company. Meaning we were no longer under our parent company's umbrella and were no longer concerned with retaining customer loyalty. I got to tell customers no and respond with every bit of sarcasm and disdain to every Karen I encountered for one month until the store officially closed. I worked at a movie theater and some customers were adamant that a staff member had stolen their wallet after they dropped it. Turns out that these people just couldn't see and found the wallet once they actually looked for it. They got irate with literally everyone. From the mall security to the managers to the staff. Mall security finally said get the FCK out and the customers went you can't say that. This isn't your theater. We're customers. Mall security guy promptly said this is my mall. And I can do whatever the FCK I want. New CEO came to our department on the first day of his work. He didn't have a pass card yet and a lower level employee told him that he can't enter without pass card. CEO got upset and ordered a worker to let him in. But the worker insisted. Show me the pass card. Or you're not entering. Semicolon. Few days later this worker got a bonus. Sometime in the late 80s I worked at a Walmart warehouse. There was a strict rule. If you didn't have your security badge you could not get in the front door. One day just behind me an older fellow gets stopped by LP for no badge. One of my friends pokes me and points out that the LP guy just refused to let Sam Walton in the door. We all stopped to watch what we assumed was going to be a shitty show. To his credit MR. 
Walden stops and goes back to his vehicle and gets his badge and he thanked the LP guy for following the rules. My parents came to visit and my mother. Who is very old fashioned the woman should be a homemaker and if not she shouldn't out earn the man kind of old fashioned. Told my wife, who makes stacks as a dev team manager compared to my peanuts as a sports writer. You know dear you really should try to keep a cleaner house. I was working as a consultant for a company. There was a bit of a competition between me and this guy. Company starts to have some financial issues so I'll even start working for a client of theirs. Shortly after joining they bring in this guy I was competing with at my old job. He was technically my equal except now I was employed by the client and he was just a consultant. He was trying to one up me during meetings and my boss told him that decisions are made by the company not the consultants. It felt good. I once had a boss try to give me a disciplinary, three months later I may add, for my behavior as it was noted I was rude to her by several of the group CEOs in a board meeting. On the disciplinary forms. You both have to write your version of the events and it goes to HR for an adjudication. She did her part and I casually filled in something to the effect of manager continually pressured me into deleting files from our client management system prior to a regulatory audit which is against the ethical code of our profession and not aligned with my moral standards. I accept I was short with her but she was trying to force me into performing an illegal activity. I watched her collect up the paper and the color drained from her face. I never did hear from HR. She got fired not long after when I casually mentioned to the CEO in a bar if she remembered the encounter and explained why I may have appeared a little frustrated and upset. Bye Felicia. When my manager at McDonald's gets into bitch fights with all the aggressive toxic customers and booting them out the store by calling them all security if they refuse to leave. My wife and I moved to WA state and my mill tried to tell me that she was going to call the police because I had pot in the house. I taught my 6th grade students about democratic processes. And we ran a simulation. Without fail. Every one of my classes tried to impeach me. When I was still a child I saw how abusive my grandparents were to my parents when they used to stay in their house during their early years of marriage when they were broke. They are forced to accept the abuse and swallow their pride knowing that they're still indebted to them and had nowhere to go. Once they have enough money to leave my grandparents they move to a small rented house. My grandparents came for an unannounced visit and berate my dad for living in such a shanty house and how I'm grateful he was for leaving their home. My dad was silent until they start blaming my mother for being a wife that brought bad luck to my dad and how she poisons him into moving to a new home. My dad weren't having any of their bile anymore and kicked them out. They stopped talking until my grandfather was dying of leukemia. My mom was the one who persuaded my dad to see him before he passed. Some white house lady sat at my bar and tried to get a drink without ID. She pulled out her white house ID card which had no dob. I work at the white house. I told her that her bosses would be very proud of me enforcing their laws when I didn't serve her a drink. When my shtty father kicked me out of the house and then demanded he have access to my bank to control my financial situation and I got to tell him you have no control over me anymore. Girl came into my apartment to hang out with my roommate. Demanded that I turn off the football game I was watching so we could focus on her. I literally said to her, who the hell do you think you are? And kept watching the game. She yelled at me and stormed out. Thankfully me and my roommate never saw her again. One of my new employees came from a competitor who is, shall we say, not as put together as we are. Her former boss had actually called me to yell at me about poaching his consultants. Which, in and of itself, is weird enough. However, a few weeks after she started the dude rolled up to our office. He had apparently been calling her to get her to finish an analysis for him and she just ghosted him. I went to the lobby to see what the FCK he was doing here. He started in on me again and then she happened to walk by. I didn't fully understand the conversation but at one point he literally demanded she do this analysis. She just said. Or what? And waited a few beats before turning on her heels and walking away. 
I did the ol' hand on his back point to the door universal symbol for leave or a large security man will make you leave. Never heard from him again.